today I'm talking about both the Canon 16 to 35 and the Canon 24 to 105 F4 ISL USM lenses and which one you should buy. Disclaimer, the better choice is solely based on use case. Before buying either of these lenses, know what you'll be using them for or any camera gear for that matter. Know your use case and use that knowledge to gauge each purchase. Let's get to the good stuff. Lenses. These are two great lenses, which covers all the bases for what you may be looking for when starting out in photography and video. If you know you're only interested in having two zoom lenses that does it all, then these two are lenses you want. You may even want to grab the 10 to 18 as the hashtag, just in case you want to try out astrophotography lens. They're great for content creation like vlogs, weddings, commercial video and photo, music videos, headshots, product photography. I can keep going, but in short, with both of these lenses, you really don't need anything else. I mean, a camera body, of course, and a mic and lights, flashes, computer, light stands, diffusion, which all depends on the type of shooter you are. You may just need a computer with a light, maybe a flash and a microphone. First, let's talk about the 16 to 35. The 16 to 35 is a wide to mid range lens. It is equipped with stabilization, which comes in handy if you are using a camera that doesn't come with stabilization. It comes with this red ring right here. The red ring signifies it as an L series lens, which means it was constructed with Canon's highest quality glass. Definitely a bit on the hefty side. I mean, you'd expect high quality glass to be hefty, right? It is the vlogger's favorite focal length, 16 millimeters, which is pretty wide. And it is the portrait photographer's backup 24 to 35 millimeter lens. You still get great compression and shallow depth of field at f4 especially when close to the 35 millimeters it is considered an internal zoom lens which means the barrel of the lens doesn't protrude from the body basically the lens stays one size when you zoom in and out which is perfect for gimbal work if you're into that there are a couple of downsides the widest aperture is f4 and the steam engine focus motor yes the lens does have a focus motor and it is just as loud as any of the other loud lenses out there that have focus motors but it can get pretty loud and using an on-camera mic may be out of the question but if you have something like the wireless roll go or a lav mic then you're all good now let's talk about the 24 to 105. The 24 to 105 is a mid to tight or long focal range lens and has identical qualities as the 16 to 35 f4. Equipped with stabilization, red ring signifying it is an L series lens, is a bit on a hefty side, if not heftier than the 16 to 35, and wide enough on the wide end to vlog with at 24 millimeters. It is basically the vlogger's backup 24 millimeter and the portrait and event photographer's favorite zoom lens. It has enough reach for photographing events and wide enough for small to mid sized group photos. The major difference between the 24 to 105 and the 16 to 35 is a 24 to 105 doesn't have an internal zoom, which means when you zoom out, the lens protrudes or extends and doubles in length. This can be a downside when it comes to shooting in the rain, snow, the desert, and on a gimbal. There's a higher likelihood of a chance of getting dust particles and moisture inside the lens, and when on a gimbal, you'll have to rebalance or realign when you zoom in and out. Speaking of downsides, this is an F4 lens and it also comes with a loud focus motor. A few things to note you'll need to adopt some workarounds with these lenses. But then again, what gear doesn't require workarounds? If you're just getting into photography, videography, cinematography, and vlogging, then these lenses are a great starting point. They will provide you the experience you're looking to get, which I think is the most important thing to consider when starting out. They are the focal lengths that all the top YouTubers and vloggers use. They were constructed with Canon's highest quality luxury materials, sharp all the way through the entire focal range. Because they start at f4, which tends to be the f-stop where most lenses are sharp, although they are considered kit lenses. If you are looking to keep your kit small, kinda light, and sorta compact, these lenses are the way to go. They are massive compared to some of the smaller lenses coming out now that cover the same focal ranges or close to them. But price-wise, when buying new or used lenses, these lenses blow most of the other newer and used lens out of the water. And as I mentioned before, if you are looking to keep your kit small, get great quality, then these lenses are the two to get. Being that they are F4, another thing to note is that most lenses are sharpest at f4 f5.6 and f8 so keep that in mind when considering these lenses or any other lens out there for that matter because 
these lenses are sharp. If you are looking for something softer but still want the quality, then you can throw on a 1 8 Pro Mist and call it a day. What I found most discouraging when starting out was using lenses that I felt weren't getting me what I was looking for. These will get you what you are looking to get, even with a fair amount of shallow depth of field. If you are looking for a super shallow depth of field, I would go with Primes. They're around the same price as the 16 35 and the 24 to 105 use, but they only come with a single focal length. But when starting out, you want the versatility of a zoom lens. I feel the best place to start is zooms. It'll help you learn what your favorite focal lengths are and then go for primes later down the road. Which one should you buy? The one you should buy is solely based on use case. If you're looking for something you can grow into that covers a varied focal range that is slightly wide but has reach, then the 24 to 105 is your best friend. But if you know you will always need something that is wide and can get away with a mid range focal length, then the 16 to 35 is the way to go. And both of these lenses are vlogger friendly. Let me know which is your favorite focal range, even if it isn't these lenses. What else is there to say? Oh yeah, you can find videos I already made about these lenses right here. Thanks for joining me. Stay awesome.